Do you believe in God's existence? I do not. Do you know, I rode past you, went way down the road, and turned around and came back. And the reason I did that is I feel God's hand is on you. He's not going to let you perish. i seen you on YouTube before. So what did you think when you watched it on YouTube? I actually wanted you to interview me one time. And I guess really? This was the time. Yeah. And it happened today? Yeah. Do you think there's an afterlife? I do. And why do you think that? Um, I guess I wasn't really into believing that you just go to heaven once you die. Or if you do bad, you go to hell. I always believe that there is more to that. So, where are you going when you die? Either you reincarnate into something better, or you relive the world. Now, tell me about reincarnation. How many people were on the earth, say, 2,000 years ago? What do you think? Billions. Maybe one or two billion? How many are there now? Probably six billion. Well, it's eight, getting there, eight billion. Eight billion. Where are all these new people coming from? If everyone gets reincarnated, shouldn't have stayed at about two billion. What's with this extra six billion people? You know, reincarnation doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Do you believe the Bible? Uh, a few things from it, yeah. Have you ever read it? No, not personally, no. It's the world's biggest seller of all time. Do you know it tells you how to find everlasting life? Did you know that? No, I did not. Yeah. If you could guess what the Bible says about how to get everlasting life, what do you think it would be? Be a good person? That would be one of them. It's not. You know that? I did not. Yeah. You know why? Why? The Bible says there's none good. No one's good. Only God is good. And good means moral perfection and thought, word, and deed. So no one's good. So being good is the criteria to go to heaven. None of us are going there. Do you believe in God's existence? I do not. Are you open? Open-minded, yes. Okay, I'm going to give you evidence. It's basic, logical, reasonable, rational evidence. Right behind you, there's a building, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's say the builder died 200 years ago. How do you know there was a builder that built that building? Well, the building's there. Buildings don't build themselves, so the building is evidence of the builder. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So creation is evidence of the creator. Does that make sense? It does. So now you believe in God's existence? No, I do not. Say that again? I do not. You know why you prefer not to believe in God's existence? Have why? you ever studied your motives? You no. ever think about your motives? Tell me if I'm wrong here. You don't like the thought of God's existence because if God exists, you are morally accountable to Him and you're doing things that you know in your heart are morally wrong. Am I right? Yes. Okay. Do you think God's happy with you or angry at you? Happy. You're not doing anything morally wrong? I am. You're looking at pornography? About that. Say that again? About that. When did you last look at pornography? About a year ago. About a year ago? You've gone for a year without looking at it? Yeah. You got a girlfriend? I do. You're having sex with her? No. Excuse me? I am not. Are you lying to me? No. <laughs> I promise you I'm not. Why are you not having sex with you? Everyone has sex nowadays. She's not ready. She's not ready? Are you going to marry her? I am. She sounds like a marriable lady if she's saying no to wants to keep her virginity. That's wonderful. Okay, let's go through the commandments, see how you're going to do on Judgment Day. Can you be honest with me? Yes. How many lies have you told in your life? A lot. What do you call someone who tells lies? What was that? What do you call someone who tells lies? A liar. So what are you? A liar. You ever stolen something? Yes. What do you call someone who steals? A stealer. A thief. A thief. So what are you? A thief. No? A lying thief. A lying thief. Do you still think you're a good person? Yes. Have you ever used God's name in vain? I have. Explain to me why you'd use God's name as a cuss word. Instead of saying a filth word beginning with S, a four-letter word, you put his name in its place. Why would you do that? I never really thought about that. Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Yes. Of course you have. You looked at pornography. So, have you had sex before marriage? Yes. Okay. Victor, I'm not judging you. This is for you to judge yourself, okay? Mm -hmm. You've told me you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, fornicating, adulterer at heart. And you have to face God on Judgment Day. 
If he judges you by the Ten Commandments, we've looked at four, you're going to be innocent or guilty. Guilty. Heaven or hell. Hell. Oh. Now, does that concern you? No. Man, it concerns me. I'm horrified. The thought of death seizing on you today. You're a young guy. You love, you love life. You don't want to lose it. And if death came to you today and God gave you justice, you'd be damned. You'd take away everything that you've... Everything, every good thing that he's lavished upon you, he'd take from you. And that would be a terrible thing to happen. Do you know, I rode past you, went way down the road, and turned around and came back. And the reason I did that is I feel God's hand is on you. He's not going to let you perish. He's not going to let you go to hell. He wants you to be saved. Now, let's see how your knowledge is. What did God do for guilty sinners so he wouldn't have to go to hell? Sacrifice himself. Yeah, Jesus suffered and died on the cross. Now, most people know that, but they don't know this. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. That's what we've looked at today, the moral law. You and I broke the law. Jesus paid the fine. That's what happened on the cross. Do you remember his last words? Just before he dismissed his spirit, he said three very profound words. Do you remember what they are? He said, it is finished. Why do you think he said that? He was saying the debt has been paid. We broke God's law. Jesus paid the fine. Victor, if you're in court and you've got a stack of speeding fines, but someone pays those fines, the judge can legally let you go even though you're guilty. Can you see that? Yeah. You can say, this is deadly serious, Victor, but someone's paid him. You're out of here. And God can let us live forever legally because Jesus paid our fine on the cross. He can extend mercy toward us even though we're guilty and should go to hell. And then Jesus rose from the dead. The Bible says it was not possible that death could hold him. And Victor, if you'll simply repent of your sins, turn from them, and trust in Jesus as your Savior. God promises, and he cannot lie. He's without sin. The Bible says it's impossible for God to lie. He promises he'll grant you everlasting life as a free gift. And he'll give you evidence that what he's saying is true. He'll change you on the inside so you love that which is right rather than that which is wrong. He'll cause you to thirst after righteousness. That's what the Bible says. Do you, think what, do you think what I'm saying is true? I do. You're going to think about what we talked about? I will. Do you have a Bible? I don't. Can I give you a publication we'll produce called The Bible's Four Gospels? Sure. Will you read it? I will. Um, you know, you said you'll think about it, and I appreciate that, but would you think about it with this attitude? You could die tonight. 150,000 people die every 24 hours. And I love you, and I care about you. So I want you to really think about it with that sense of sobriety because you've got a choice. You can carry on in your sins or you can say, God, forgive me. I'm a sinner. I need your mercy. Create in me a clean heart and he'll do it. So when you think about it with that sense of sobriety? Yes. Okay. Hey, thanks for talking to me. Do you have any questions? I don't. Okay. That's great. Let me get you that, uh, the Bible's four gospels. Stay Thank there you. a minute. Oh, I'm so pleased I came back. It is. So, Victor, what were you saying? i seen you on YouTube before. So, what did you think when you watched it on YouTube? I actually wanted you to interview me one time. And I guess really? The time. Yeah. And it happened today? Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you for, thank you for saying that. You're welcome. I also, uh, I also go to church every Sunday. You do? Yeah. But you have Christian you, church. You've never repented and trusted Christ? No, I haven't. And uh, that's changed today? It will soon. Okay, that's wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. When I go into a menswear store for the first time, I really appreciate it when an attendant says, if you're looking for jackets, our most popular items are on that rack over there, and they're on special at the moment. So, welcome to our store. Here's some of our most popular tracks, and they're on special at the moment. We call this the Starter Kit. It's made up of 100 of each track and 50 Ten Commandment coins. These coins are really easy to give out. Just begin with a warm good morning and then say something like, I've got a gift for you. It's a coin with the Ten Commandments on one side and the Gospel on the other. I've even tossed a handful of these on the sidewalk among teenagers as I rode by and you should have seen them fight to get one. This is the good person test in comic form and who can resist reading a comic? Then there's 101 of the world's funniest one-liners, and these really are funny. Just say, this will lift your day. It's 101 of the world's funniest one-liners, and of course it contains the gospel. And finally, our super popular million-dollar bill. Just say, did you get your million? People love these. 
or you could just put it down somewhere and it's sure to get picked up. These 300 tracks and 50 coins would normally cost $38, but they're on special in the starter kit for just $29. Go to livingwaters.com, click on the store, and then tracks.